Arms Warrior is a monster class in Wrath, eventually becoming the best melee spec in the game. It deals an absurd amount of damage and has an excellent offensive toolkit that can destroy any opponent. This guide will go over exactly how to properly set up your Arms Warrior so you can slaughter any arena foe. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. For Alliance players, Human will be the best by far since Will to Survive acts as a PvP medallion, meaning you can equip two damage trinkets. Essentially, having an extra trinket slot allows you to gain huge pressure in all situations. So in Season 5, you can wear the Mirror of Truth trinket and Dark Moon card, while having the Human Racial to act as a CC break and get you out of trouble. This outweighs the likes of Gnome, Dwarf, and Night Elf. Even though they are good racials, Human is just that much better. As Horde, well, the story is the same as always, with Orcs being the superior race. From TBC to Wrath, Hardiness was changed from an RNG stun resist to flat out stun reduction, making it too good to miss out on. Stuns are essential in PvP, and being able to reduce stun effects makes them OP against the majority of meta comps. This could even outweigh Human in some matchups, such as against Rogues, but as high value across the board. Of course, you can't properly play Arena without a solid talent build, so let's cover what you should be running. Most of the talents for Arm are set in stone. This tree contains a strong amount of passive talents as well as a few essential talents that you should be aware of. There are only two main changes you would potentially make. The first is if you want to have an improved hamstring build over a couple of points in Sudden Death. This can be up to personal preference. Imp hamstring will give you more control while Sudden Death is going more damage. Both are quite RNG so it's difficult to dictate which choice is flat out better. Aside from that, you should also be wary of your weapon specialization as well. You should be choosing between mace, sword, or axe specs according to the best weapon you have. Your best in slot weapon in Season 5 is Betrayer of Humanity, leading to an axe specialization, which is also the best DPS increase out of the three. Mace and sword are still good alternatives for when you don't have this weapon, depending on the weapons you receive from dungeons and raids. Note that mace spec is also changed from having a random stun effect to gaining armor pen, which is a nerf overall, but most players will generally be happy that mace stun is gone. Other than that, all other talent choices will be mandatory and are pretty set in stone. You start off getting Tactical Mastery, which is essential for stance dancing. This is important as many of your spells are tied into which stance you're in, forcing you to change stances often. Spells like Intercept, Pummel, Intervene, Disarm, and even Overpower are all spells which can only be used in certain stances. Tactical Mastery removes the Rage penalty from shifting stances, therefore allowing you to min-max your pressure as well as bolster your defenses. You'll move on to picking up Sweeping Strikes, which is excellent for cleave pressure. Using this ability can make it easy to pressure melee cleaves or important pets, gaining a ton of damage and landing unsuspecting kills. Mortal Strike is the bread and butter of Arms Warrior, cutting your opponent's healing received by half and dealing a ton of damage. The additional passive talents that increase its pressure allows you to slaughter your enemy easily, being an ability you want to use as often as possible. Unrelenting Assault is an absurdly powerful talent that is central to the warrior playstyle since it can be used to stack an additional healing reduction on top of Mortal Strike. It is a debuff that gets applied whenever Overpower is used on cast and reduces the target's healing done by 50%, which stacks with the healing debuff for Mortal Strike. On top of that, it can also be used defensively, since it also reduces enemy spell damage when used properly. All in all, this talent is one you absolutely cannot pass up, and it's a huge part of damage and playstyle inside of Arena. The final talent in the arms tree is Bladestorm. This deals a ton of incredible damage in single or multi-target situations. It can easily bring down the health of any player, often requiring them to burn a defensive cooldown in order to survive. This is an iconic ability that you absolutely can't play without. As far as the other trees are concerned, the only thing you should care about is Piercing Howl. This is an excellent snare which makes it easier for you to catch up to your targets or potentially kite them. 
Moving on, we have glyphs, which can be a bit daunting at first, but let's break it down. Arms has one mandatory major glyph, which is Glyph of Mortal Strike. This gives you a flat out increase in pressure all the time on one of your main spells, making it a default pickup. Your second choice will usually be Glyph of Overpower. This is great against any melee specs and even hunters since it allows you to damage through parry. Note that if a hunter ever uses deterrence, you can spam overpower them, allowing you to keep up pressure even through their biggest defensive cooldown. The only time you should replace this is if you're knowingly going to queue into caster cleaves. In that case, you can use Glyph of Bladestorm, reducing the cooldown of your biggest damaging ability, which will help in the long run. Note that this glyph will get most of its value in longer games, which are less common in the early expansion. The third glyph will be a more situational choice depending on if you put talents into improved hamstring. If you did, then Glyph of Hamstring will increase the chances of you being able to root your opponents. If you don't talent improved hamstring, then you should use Glyph of Rending. This helps manage your globals easier when playing arena games that aren't over too quickly. It also helps with Taste of Blood procs, considering you'll have an easier time keeping up Rend, which is in your best interest for your damage rotation. As for your minor glyphs, you'll be taking Battle Shout, Blood Rage, and Charge. There's not much to say about minor glyphs as they aren't too impactful. All these are basically quality of life glyphs that'll be a nice addition in the arena. Next up, we're going to go over gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our Warrior series, it is available only at skillcap.com. There, you can access our premium damage and playstyle courses, which were designed by expert Wrath of the Lich King players. If that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries, where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating gain guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So, check out skillcap.com today. Now it's time to talk about gear, so let's cover gearing with both a pre-bis and end-of-season loadout. First though, it's important to understand your stat priority, which looks something like this. Getting your hit chance to 5% is vital so your spells don't miss on your target. Any misses on your spells results in a huge loss in pressure, which is what you want to avoid as a warrior. After that, strength and resilience are what you should be aiming to stack. Bear in mind, you should also be gemming resilience, but we will cover that shortly. Last of all, you want to get as much critical strike as possible since it is the best DPS secondary stat, which means avoiding haste whenever you can. As for gearing, we came up with a pre-biz set and an end of season set to guide the gearing process in season 5. Here's what your pre-biz gear looks like. First off, you want to get your 4 set bonus as quick as possible, picking up the Savage Gladiator helm, shoulders, chest, and gauntlets. This can be acquired from PvP or even using badges from dungeons. Ideally, your leg piece will be staggering leg plates, which you can get from a guard keep. You can also get your pre bis weapon, belt, and rings from clearing certain dungeons before Season 5 hits. Getting badges from these dungeons will also be in your interest, as you can purchase your next slot and Mirror of Truth from vendors. The rest of the gear you could buy from the Auction House, being quite accessible provided you have the gold for it. However, the bracers and boots could be crafted if you have access to blacksmithing, which is a profession you should have as a warrior anyway. Bear in mind if you do end up playing Horde or as a non-human race, you should drop Mirror of Truth for your medallion trinket. Your gems and enchants should be exactly the same as shown here, being the best enchants to go for at this stage, as well as gemming for a ton of resilience to make you a bit more tanky. The helm should also include the Relentless Earth Siege Diamond, being best for your DPS. As such, you want the gems shown in order to activate it. As for the rest of your gems, you should mainly be using Mystic Autumn's Glow, gaining as much resilience as possible. This can be prioritized over any socket if the socket bonuses aren't great. If you do want socket bonuses, then you should use Resplendent Monarch Topaz for your red sockets. Your blue socket should be Vivid Forest Emeralds or Steady Forest Emeralds, depending on if you need the hit rating. Lastly, you should always include an Enchanted Tier as one gem slot, giving you a bunch of extra stats while helping bring you closer to meta gem requirements. Moving on, we have your end of season best in slot gear, which includes pieces from arena points and raids. PvP gearing will be a priority at this stage, picking up 7 pieces overall from arena, including the 4 set bonus from the deadly gear. Ideally, your chest piece will be a tier piece from raiding, since it has favorable stats, allowing you to maintain your needed hit rating and gaining more crit. Speaking of raiding, the other 5 pieces of gear shown here will all be from early game raids. The weapon specifically will be your biggest DPS increase. Arms Warriors are reliant on weapon damage and Betrayer of Humanity is by far the best in Season 5. Other than that, your second ring could be found from raiding or on the auction house as it's a BOE drop. And for your two trinket slots, luckily for you, they don't actually change. You can use the same two trinkets from earlier gearing, as they remain to be the best DPS trinkets for this season. Just remember, if you're not human, then you should drop Mirror of Truth for the Medallion trinket. 
Even though we briefly alluded to it with gear sets, let's go over your best professions. Jewel crafting is by far the best profession in the game for pretty much any class. JC is one of the only professions that allow you to bolster your resilience with its amplified gems, and gaining three big resilience gems will help add to one of your best stats as an arms warrior. Having high resilience allows you to play more aggressively, pumping out damage in offensive stances and making it difficult for you to die. The second best profession will be blacksmithing. As you know by now, arms warriors love resilience, so gaining more of it wherever you can and will strengthen your loadout. The passive stats both these professions provide have great synergy with the playstyle of an arms warrior. Being bulkier means more damage, and more damage means more winning. The last part of getting your character ready is by making a number of macros to make your gameplay more fluid. Let's start with the focus macros that you should have. These five spells shown here are all great spells to have for focus targets as well. Focus macros are best for spells that are reactive, which is why we've included it on kicks and charges. These are all high priority macros since you should ideally be using them in every game. Intervene macros will also be in your best interest as you can intervene your partner in a timely manner without needing to manually target them. You can either have player name macros or party 1 and 2 depending on your preference. As you just saw, some abilities require stances to be pressed so you should create stance dance macros. These can be as flexible as you want, but you can macro in your stances with certain spells so you can use them with more ease. Here are a few examples of each showing how the macros would look like. You can do this with as many spells as you like, but definitely include the ones we have listed on screen. There are also a number of abilities which you can only use with a one hand plus shield equipped, so you'll need macros like this that can swap weapons quickly so you can use your spells in time. This is a necessity for spell reflection, shield block, shield wall, and shield bash. These are common spells to use in the arena, so having macros for them will be warranted. Just make sure to change the name of your one hand weapon or shield to whichever gear you have access to. Next up, one of the few basic macro commands to understand is the start attack function, which essentially just helps get your white swings in. Sometimes your melee swings just stop working for whatever reason, especially when changing targets, so by having this macroed into some of your abilities will reduce the chance of missing auto attacks. You can put it in as many abilities as you like, but having it in your main damaging spells should be enough. And last but not least, you should have Cancel Aura macros for Bladestorm and for Paladin spells. You can put Cancel Aura Bladestorm macros in abilities themselves or in a separate binding as shown. Having this will allow you to remove your Bladestorm if you need to use other spells that are more important in your current situation. Cancel Aura macros for Paladin spells will also be needed, considering you will most likely play with Paladins at some point. You may need to remove Hand of Protections or Freedom so that you don't give mages these spells when facing them. Hand of Protection also stops you from dealing any damage, so having a macro to cancel this will definitely be needed when you want to gain pressure again. Anyway, that summarizes this starter course on Warrior in Wrath Season 5. Hope you all enjoyed this guide, and feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.